into the new year and it's a great time to start thinking about breathing some new life into your spaces. We've got some great design tips for refreshing any room in your home on today's SoFlo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. So if your home is in need of a refresh, we are here to help you. We're gonna be sharing some great advice on how to pretty much tackle a refresh in any room of your home with some practical design tips. Today, we'll look at ways to update a room by decluttering and restoring your furniture, freshen up your walls with some new paint, change a room with floor coverings, and much more. So when it comes to refreshing your home, it's always great to first think about decluttering. Get rid of those items, the furniture pieces, the junk, the things that you don't need in the space and might have been thinking about getting rid of but haven't yet. Declutter first, but then before it's time to start putting things back, you may want to consider some of the principles of Feng Shui. Laura, welcome to SoFlo Thank Home you. Project. Thank you, look forward to it. Yeah, so you specialize in interior design with the basic principles of Feng Shui. Correct. And I think this is gonna be a great way to share with our audience how you incorporate some of those basic principles, but in a practical way into your design projects. Yes, so. absolutely. Feng Shui can get very complicated and I have a lot of clients that reach out to me that want to have that feel and the energy without really getting into um, the energy numbers and the personal feng shui. So this is home feng shui. So let's quickly touch on what the, the whole principles of feng shui is about. So feng shui is the art of energy and it's really important for the placement of the furniture to flow and for the air to flow through it. So Laura, let's break it down, basic principles of feng shui from when you arrive at the home. What are the most important things? Well, number one, you have to make it super visible for um, visitors to spot the number of your house so they're not frustrated when they get to your home. So they come in with good energy. So simple and so practical, right? Are there any specific don'ts that are just like key things you should not do? Absolutely. The number one thing you don't want to do is block the entry. People block the entry with a sofa, they block the entry with a, a console table. You do not want to do that. You don't want to come into a space and feel kind of rejected. It should feel open and just like you can flow right through the entry. Absolutely. Or in the, the living space here, what are some of the things, some of the principles to keep in mind when setting up a formal living space? Um, no sharp edges. They're called poison arrows and we tend to have them in the simplest of forms like a coffee table square coffee table. Throws, it's really important. You could throw them over the sofas to cover up the sharp edges. Natural plants uh, as much as possible. So lots oxygen. of greenery. And we have some right over here. This is beautiful. Yeah, so this is a live moss wall. Wow, and I love the pop of the greenery. Yes. It just feels so fresh and also very inviting. It's very well. important for the oxygen in the house. Now when it comes to light fixtures and stuff, we see a lot that are more spiky and starburst. Are those also things that are no? Those are no. Yeah, you just feel an edge, right? If you have something over your head that's that's bokey, you're afraid it might fall on you. So, so they're supposed very to feel common clean sense and open. Co correct. Now I notice we have other things placed throughout. I see some chimes. How does that incorporate into feng shui? Well, that gets a little bit deeper into feng shui. Um, that's one of the essential tools of feng shui. You're supposed to have two chimes in your home. Uh, as the energies move, you move them. They're the most practical thing to put in your house to bring feng shui into your home. So I hope that you get a chance to apply some of those feng shui principles into your own home. Sometimes just those little changes can really go a long way. And speaking of little changes that can go a long way, decluttering your home is one of those things and we're going to show you how to get rid of some of the items and bring in a little bit of cash. So stay with us. Coming up, tips on whether to replace or update your furniture pieces on SoFlo Home Project. I'm Mike with USA Windows and Doors. One of the most important things you can do in your house is change your door to an impact door. We're going to show you how we do it on today's SoFo Home Project.
Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Alina Capra and we are continuing to share some ways to refresh your home for the new year. So a lot of when it comes to refreshing your home has to do with the furnishings themselves and a great way to kind of bring new life to any room is sometimes to move some things around. When it comes to changing up the layout, you always need to have a tape measure handy. If you do not measure, it is impossible to figure out what's gonna fit and if it's gonna fit right. So when it comes to getting rid of the furniture, it's always nice to get a little extra cash when you do so to have something to put towards the new furnishings. So we've got some great tips on how to get the most bang for your buck when it comes to reselling furniture. Going through all the things that you've accumulated over time can be totally overwhelming. In order to keep your sanity, you must look at the big picture and take things one room at a time. So when we talk about getting rid of the old, a very big part of that is getting rid of the old furniture. But there could be several ways to do that and sometimes you may not know where those pieces fit in. So you can consign, you can sell online or on apps, donate, and of course, when all else fails, haul away the junk. Consigning is to be for the furniture that holds the most value. This could be name brands, very well known or iconic pieces, or even great antiques. So anything of great value, you may wanna think about consigning for getting the most bang for your buck. Couple of things to think about. When you are going to consign furniture, you always wanna make sure that the contract with the consignment shop is fully understood. You're gonna get a certain percentage of that sale, usually somewhere between 40 to 60%. It could vary based on the shop itself. And you also want to make sure you ask the questions. How long will it be on the floor before you mark it down for additional sale price? And just be really familiar with that. And another note on that is a lot of the times if you need a means of getting the piece to the consignment shop, a lot of the consignment stores offer usually a third party delivery service. So there may be an additional fee to do that. So when you are consigning, think wisely. It's going to be for those pieces that you think are going to bring you the most value for the money. Probably the most popular way to get rid of furniture and also make a little cash for it is selling on apps or online. The key thing is to have great photos. They say a picture is worth a thousand words and it certainly is when you're selling online because if you have a bad photo, no one is going to really look at the piece. So you kind of have to sell it like a great ad. So having about five photos of the piece usually is gonna be great. Remember, when you're photographing with your phone, you wanna get all details. You wanna make sure you're showing the piece in its best view. And another great thing is to think about photographing it in great lighting. Just like taking a picture, bad lighting equals bad photos. Just as important as the photo is the description. If it has drawers or other features, list those features, and then maybe even add a photograph of those features of the drawer opened up so you can see that. Uh, if there's a certain piece or accessory that's part of it, show that in the description as well as in your photos. And you wanna list the condition. Is it in good, fair, perfect, never used, still in the box? You wanna make sure you list those things so people know what they're getting, there's no dispute, and if there is damage to the piece, take a photo of that too and show that in the pictures. So aren't those some great ways to get a little extra cash for some new furnishings? But we've got two more ways to help you declutter and I'm going to share those with you. But before we do that, let's check in with Mike Martinez from USA Windows and Doors and see what great advice he has for us today. I'm Mike from USA Windows and Doors. A lot of people think about windows and how they're going to protect their house, but impact doors are just as important. They're a critical part of giving overall protection all the way around. This beautiful door from ES Windows is going to highlight this house. We're going to walk you through how we took the old door out and we're going to put the brand new door in. With a beautiful side light matching along with it, the privacy glass and the, and the bronze tinted glass, it's a beautiful addition to this home. So now that we can see the door coming out, now the real work begins. The one thing you really have to understand when you look at these door frames in the, the traditional way, as you can see, this door was an in-swing door. Came inside, doesn't meet building code today. We have to make sure that door opens outward. We want to make sure that it can't push in in, in case of a hurricane. So you can see on this door frame, it's really not designed or to handle any kind of real impact or wind pressure. See this gap? I can fit my whole hand up in here all the way around it. 
When we put this new door frame, there won't be a gap. We're gonna take this door out, we're gonna take this frame out, we're gonna replace all the wood bucks, make sure the concrete's ready, prepare for a brand new door. So here at USA Windows and Doors, we have a wide selection of doors. We can handle this door with a side light. We could have made the door a little bit wider. We could have put a pivot door in here. Bottom line is, we can handle just about any situation a customer wants. This home is protected against any storm and against any unwanted entry. If you're interested in having that same protection, check us out, usawindowsanddoors.com. Back to you, Elena. Thanks, Mike. So when it comes to refreshing your home, it really does all start with decluttering. Getting rid of the junk, getting rid of the pieces that perhaps you can sell, and getting rid of the pieces you can donate. So the first two ways of getting rid of furniture is to bring some extra cash to your pockets, but sometimes there's a way to do that, which is just something that helps others, and that's donating furniture pieces. And it's something that I love to do. There are a lot of great organizations within Dayton Broward that you can donate your pieces that will even include complimentary pickups. So it costs you nothing, and it brings so much to others, and it's also tax deductible. So the last way is when you've decluttered, you've sold everything, and there's just a lot of leftover junk. And how do you get rid of it all? Well, there's a lot of great junk hauling companies that can even sometimes come same day. Having these companies that haul the junk away is the perfect last step to getting that house clean and either ready for your move or for your redecoration. Coming up next, we have painting tips that make a big refresh impact on SoFlo Home Project. Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we are continuing to share some great ways to refresh your home for the new year. So, one of the biggest ways to have maximum impact when changing anything in your home is by changing up the wall paint colors, whether it's one room or the entire house. So, making sure that you pick the right finish and the right color is half of the battle, so we're going to be sharing some great tips on how to do that. When you're thinking about starting a painting project, it's always best to first prepare, prepare, prepare. This way it makes for a much easier painting process and then there's also less room for error. So where do we begin when you want to change the color of those walls that you're tired of looking at? I always like to start with inspiration. Get inspirational photos. Go online, look on social media, look through if you have some design magazines. Now, when you're ready to go with getting those samples of paint, it's always best to go with a small sample. And they vary in size based on manufacturer, but you don't want to go and buy a whole gallon just to test a sample of paint. So there is quite a few different sheens for paint. So it always starts with your flat finish, okay? Great for your ceilings, great for walls that have imperfections because it's not going to highlight the imperfections. The shiny you go with the paint, the more you see those. The next step up from that when it comes to paint sheen is your eggshell finish. It has just a little bit of sheen and it's perfect for bedrooms, for you know living rooms, dining rooms, all of those you know gathering areas that aren't super high traffic, but this will be a little bit more forgiving to clean than a flat paint. Now, one up from that. Say you're a little bit more worried about a higher traffic area. A satin finish is sometimes a great choice. Satin is just has a little bit more sheen, a little bit more cleanability, and perfect for some of those spaces like your kitchens, baths, hallways, more high traffic areas. From there, we go up to more of the gloss sheen. So we got the glosses, you've got your semi-gloss. Some people still like the sheen of a semi-gloss in a bathroom, and that's a great choice as well, or in a kitchen if you don't want high shine. But if you want more of that high shine, you're gonna go with the gloss finish and that looks beautiful on a lot of wood trim and a lot of baseboards as well. So when it gets into those, it's more about a little bit of a preference. They're both great options. So when you're considering your paint, there's another big decision you have to make. What type of paint are you using? Are you using oil-based paint 
or latex. I would say most of the painting you're gonna do is gonna be in the interior, the latex paint. Now, it's easy to clean up. Simply soap and water on the brush, easy to clean up on your hands. So it's the perfect paint for the weekend warrior or the DIY because cleanup is simple. The color will be more durable as well as will not emit as many odors. It's not toxic. It could easily be disposed of as opposed to the oil based paint. So I hope that those were some useful tips in selecting the proper paint for your interior spaces. And of course, don't forget, it's all about sampling the paint. So definitely do those samples before you commit to one big color. <laughs> so it's not just about refreshing the walls. Sometimes the floors can use a little love as well. And we've got some great tips on how to do just that. So stay with us. Next, we show you how to refresh any room with stylish floor coverings on Soflo Home Project. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and we are continuing to share some great ways to refresh your home for the new year. So we've talked about decluttering, selling old furnishings, getting some space ready for new stuff, and even refreshing your walls with new paint. Now, once you have the walls all freshly painted, there are so many great textured papers, and perhaps it's not even texture, it may be pattern, it may be something with a little pop of color. So once the walls are dressed, now it's time to start thinking about the floors and perhaps you're not replacing your floors, but just enhancing them and adding texture, pattern, color, or all three are some great ways to add some personality to your floors. And we're joined by Whitney Donati from Star Carpet. Whitney, welcome. Thank you. So Whitney, I wanted to show our viewers all the possibilities of designing with carpeting and not just as I guess we would call it wall to wall carpeting, but creating something out of that carpet in a certain size or shape. And you've got a lot to show us to do that, right? Uh, yes. So wall to wall broad is carpet is, that is machine manufactured in 12 foot widths, 13 foot widths, and now we're doing hand loomed at 15. Wow. And so that's typically like on a roll. Correct. Let's talk a little bit about the way you finish the rug. The most um, common is to do a surged edge. And it, that's that right there with this. Correct. One, this as well. So if this was a 12 foot broad loom, you would take it, surge the edge into your size, whether it's a circle or square. And that keeps it from fraying and just finishes the edge, correct? correct. All comes with a raw edge. Now, you've got something interesting over here that looks pretty fun. Talk to us about what that is. It looks like a leather. Okay, this is a leatherette. It's actually a faux leather on an indoor-outdoor carpet. For people who want a cleaner look, this is an indoor-outdoor vinyl with a is it leather, faux leather? It totally looks like leather. You could pick pretty much from like any of these materials and bring in the other colors in your room. Correct. And these are done on natural fiber. You can also expand the width. Bindings are only maybe four inches wide, but by adding oh, wow. more than one color. So you can make you, it a wider brush. Correct. As well. You can get up to an eight foot binding. And I think to our viewers at home, this is such a great way to really get creative. And lastly, we even do a nail head. You can do it on a staircase, an area rug, and basically by selecting your nail heads oh, and wow. deciding where you want them applied along the way, you can create even a more interesting look. We see it on furniture Absolutely. and upholstery. You definitely see it on furniture and it's really interesting to see it bringing that detail, that metal, into your carpeting as well. So I hope that you guys enjoyed all of these tips and are off to a great start of refreshing your own homes. And as usual, please don't forget to share all your home projects with us on social media with the hashtag SoFlo Home Project. So before we go, let's take a look at what design inspiration we have for you next week on SoFlo Home Project. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we show you how to maximize compact spaces as we tour a small condo that's been completely redesigned with big style and great function. And before we go, let's check in with our friend Hunter Frankie, the host of SoFlo Health, and see what he's got going on tomorrow. Hunter, what's up? 
Hey there, Elena. Tomorrow on SoFlow Health, we're showing you how to use this. It's a BOSU ball, and you might have seen it before, but maybe you don't use it properly. Well, we'll show you how, plus Gong Hei Fa Choi. We'll give you some wok recipes that are healthy and quick to make. It's all right here at 12.30 p.m. on the one and only Local 10 for SoFlow Health. Hunter, that sounds great. We will definitely be watching. And to our viewers, we thank you for joining us this week. And we hope to see you again next week for another all new episode of SoFlo Home Project right here on Local 10. And remember, there's no place like SoFlo Home. If you missed any part of this episode, or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloShows.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram.